live from Barcelona, Spain, it's theCUBE, covering Cisco Live 2018. Brought to you by Cisco, Veeam, and theCUBE's ecosystem partners. Hello everyone, welcome back to the live CUBE coverage here in Barcelona, Spain for the CUBE's coverage of Cisco Live, Europe 2018, kicking off the new year, the big event. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE Coast of the CUBE. Our next two guests, Alfred Manhart, who's a senior director, channel, and system integrators for NetApp, EMEA Europe, Middle East and Africa, and Benjamin Laplane, EMEA Chief Sales and Solutions Officer with Outscale. Guys, welcome to the CUBE. Thank Hi. you. Love welcome. this partner segment. Uh, NetApp, you have a customer on, partner. Um, you guys have an interesting relationship. Why don't you like to talk about your relationship with OutScale and why are you guys here? I think uh, engaging with, uh, not only with the typical resellers and distributors is pretty key for us. We engage with service providers and cloud providers from 2012, 2013 ongoing. Uh, it's mainly to uh, be the foundation for their services they are going to market with and OutScale is out of front, one of our uh, predominant service providers we engage with on a local level. How has the channel changed? Because as the cloud service providers and cloud yeah. creates such great you know, agility and speed, mm -hmm. you can get products out faster, MVPs, and those things can be very specialized. How yeah. has your go-to-market changed with the cloud? Accelerated it, changed the makeup? What's, what's well, NetApp's? First, first of all, the market is demanding it. So some of our traditional players go the services way, and some service providers go the, uh, the typical traditional way. So engaging and broaden up the ecosystem was pretty critical for us. Yeah. So uh, different engagement yeah. models are needed because the customers require different yeah. kind of consumption models. Good, good, good leverage sales model, always a good business. Benjamin, talk about what you guys do. I want to ask some specific questions about your business on how you guys are you know, advising and implementing solutions with customers. But first, take a minute to explain your business. So uh, Outscale is a cloud service provider. So we built the company in 2010 and we've been providing a public cloud solution for worldwide, so implement, implementing in the, in the US, in Europe, and in Asia for the past uh, five years now. Uh, the objective is to be able to provide a sovereignty and a reliable solution, cloud solutions for our customers worldwide. And it's based on NetApp and, and Cisco Flexport architecture. So you guys actually have a cloud yourselves? Yeah, exactly. And, and you bring that to customers? Yeah, so um, for the past five years, what we've been doing is develop our own orchestration layer that, uh, um, that allow us to actually use the whole Flexport architecture to provide uh, uh, infrastructure as a service uh, for our customers. And what we've been doing for the past year is actually package all the technology that we've been developing for the past years into a, a unique solution, which is Tina on-prem, which is a private cloud solution ready uh, to be deployed wherever you, you need to. I'll get back to the FlexPod in a minute, but I want to drill down on um, this notion of serving the customers because there's a thirst for customization and specialization, whether it's an application, or some uh, regional challenge on the data. Certainly we see that with GDPR. It's coming down like a freight train, like a ton of bricks on everybody. So there's like design challenges that are now upon the customers. How are you guys bringing the customers' uh, uh, solutions to them? Is it um, rapid engagements? Is it ongoing? What's your relationship with your customers? So if uh, we talk specifically about GDPR, but I think it's, it's true for most regulation that's, uh, that, comes, uh, that comes out. Um, Outscale have the chance to be able to develop their uh, software with security design first. So that means that it's designed for security, but also for privacy. So that, that's kind of a give us uh, the edge when talking about regulation, enforcement, and also all the process that we put in place around infrastructure management that allow us for, for us to provide the best services for our customer, always align with the regulations that comes out. What are the biggest challenges your customers face with the cloud? Uh, I think most of them, so things got, uh, improved a lot for the past years, but the first thing was uh, everyone wanted to do it because that was kind of the name, the things that you want to go into. Now it's more big data or AI. Uh, but the idea behind this is uh, a company knows that uh, the cloud is not, is not an option. They will go to the cloud. The, the question is how and, and, and why and when and how. So we try to help and support these companies to decide what's the best for public cloud or private cloud. Alfred and Benjamin, I both want you guys both to answer this next uh, question. 
we've been observing and reporting on theCUBE, and certainly Cisco's validated it, that ev everyone kind of has some cloud thing going on. I put an app in there, it might be low hanging fruit test dev or something non-critical, but all the work and energy and money being spent is kind of getting their act together on premise. Because yeah. they got to get cloud operations going, move from the old operating model to cloud ready on premises. Yeah. And then do some hybrid cloud. Do you guys see it the same way? And if so, what specifically are they doing on, is it DevOps, is it pure operational? What are your thoughts? Start with Benjamin. So uh, from, from where I stand, what I can see is like we've, we've seen companies for the past year that went full public cloud and then other company that always stay back and say, no, we won't go to the cloud. And we see kind of things going into the, uh, a balance point where basically all companies uh, uh, now realize that they need to have a part of their infrastructure such as, as private cloud for uh, security, politics, regulation sometimes. And the other, the other, time, the other place is to decide uh, what's going to be the perimeter they're going to be allowed to put into the pub public cloud. So uh, that's why now we are more talking about hybrid between public and private cloud, and that's one of the first uh, major design of the solution that we developed. Are you saying that you're seeing some customers move completely from on-premises to cloud, full migrations? No, I think w what I've seen is uh, people that have um, kind of, so that the, the cloud was not made for them, yeah. uh, finally decided that maybe it, it could have been useful for some of their operations. So I don't think it's always like an all-in move. You need to decide whether it's going to be good depending on the perimeter, the context, the data, the, the, the criticity of the data. Alfred, on-premise activity. I am heavy <laughs> on the one side. On the other side, uh, I think you talked about test dev. A lot of people play around with test dev. This is mainly on a local level, they, behind, the, behind the scenes. But if it then goes to backup or disaster recovery, it goes up the productive stack, they are more interested if it's really going well, if the, the data resides in their country, if the, all the legislations are held. So we currently see it getting out of the test dev. And on the other side, we of course we see a trend that the customers are forced by the software vendors to go to the cloud. So Microsoft is going cloud. Uh, SAP is also going cloud. So it's not only a, a, a market trend, it's also a trend from yeah. the software vendor that yeah. they are forced to do something and they want to keep control of their data. That's why data is a little bit different from going to the cloud with computing with the apps. Yeah. Uh, data is a huge issue. All right, so how are you guys using NetApp? Talk about the FlexPod, you mentioned that earlier. So uh, Outscale, we've been using NetApp for the past uh, six years, I think, something like that, which is a pretty long time compared to the lifetime of a company. Um, the thing is for us, the most important thing was to be able uh, to provide the best services for our customers. So even if we abstract some of the, of the features, some of the, of the value of the, uh, of the NetApp product that we buy, we just keep the value for ourselves to be able to deliver more services, more value to the end customer. So that's how we've been doing things. And the second thing is also when you want to uh, uh, deploy private on-prem solution, uh, it's, it's always better and it's more reassuring for the customer when you, you use and you partners with one of the leaders of the, on their own market, such as NetApp. So I, when I hear people use the term enterprise class architecture, yeah. what does that mean? I mean, does that mean certain maybe arrays? Is it configuration? Is it network? What does enterprise class architecture mean to you? For me, it's two things. So the first thing, you have the architecture and you have also the hardware they're going to use to apply, apply to this architecture. Uh, the thing is, I was talking about re reliability. I think that's one of the major things is uh, how much maintenance is going to require, how it's going to impact the operations for the, for the user or for the end customer. And, um, and when you, you see the, um, the architecture that we've deployed, it's everything is redundant. Uh, it's, it's not fail safe, it's, it's uh, failure proof, mm -hmm. which is even better because that means that you know things are going to fail at some point and you, you, you can't even uh, you can't allow yourself to have a failure where you can't serve the, the service to your customer. What's the biggest thing that you've learned in doing the cloud migration, cloud service provider with customers over the past two years? What's the big um, aha moment that you've had? I think that's when you realize that even if you have some, some pattern that you can recognize for a specific customer or for a certain type of customer, you have no magic recipe. So that means that you always need to uh, take a, a step back, uh, look at the problems of, of your customers, and try to think what's the best for my customer and how can I bring the, the right services to, to, to him so he can add value to his market and his business. Alfred, you mentioned regulation. 
so the question to Benjamin is, how does the role of storage play in a world where data and sovereignty issues come into play? Does it change the strategy? What's, what goes on for the folks that are really trying to solve this problem? I think, the, I think we see more and more movement where basically even the customer wants ma more managed services. Uh, I think it's uh, always important to uh, give the customer the hand so he can do wh whatever he wants with his data. So we are here to support him, to give him the best advices, the best practices about data management. Uh, but at the end, he's still accountable and responsible for, the, for this data. So at the end, I think it's just, we need to give the right tools to our customers so they do exactly what they want to do with the data and they don't have like uh, hidden policies applied to their own data. So for example, replication of your data for safety measures, okay? Uh, maybe they don't want it to be replicated abroad, they want it to stay on the, on the territory. So that, that's kind of a, a thing that you need to uh, really think about and give the right tools to your customers. Alfred, what are the top use cases that you guys have seen at NetApp for cloud service providers and just in general, um, the partners, because they're in the front line serving customers, they need to have you know, low cost, high performance gear, yeah. great software, we heard reliability. What are the use cases now that you're seeing? Is it the broader use cases? Are they more narrow? What's your... So, uh, of course, for, when you come from a storage perspective, you mainly aim for the infrastructure and for the storage related services, which we are not where we are stopping. Because yeah. we are working with Cisco on these validated designs going up the stack. So if you are not uh, going up the stack uh, regarding different workloads, going after the IoT, going after the analytics, going after the application layer, we will fail. So having a fair balance of partner that can offer the services from bottom to the top, that's very important. And of course, uh, use cases like uh, uh, um, intelligent business analytics, going as after SAP, going after SAP HANA, going after Microsoft, this is obvious that the partners and the customers are going that way. Benjamin, talk about what it's like working with NetApp. You happy with them? Some things that they've done <laughs> that you that you think other other suppliers should adopt. What's their What's the mode in, uh, of support from NetApp? What's the overall experience like? I think the I would describe it as um, a strong partnerships. Uh, where they are one of the they are all exclusive partner for the storage, as Cisco can be on the other uh, uh, breaks of technology that we are using. Um, we have a strong relationship, we have a, a, a booth on their own stand today, so that's one of the, the reasons why we're here. Uh, we're also pushing with them, with the, uh, the whole, you were talking about uh, analytics, we're talking about big data, also, also we have a lot of, um, of use cases, uh, pretty amazing um, uh, use case in retail uh, in Europe. Um, and also we give them a lot of feedback about how we use the, the, the hardware, what could be improved. And I think that's the kind of communication that makes a strong partnerships and bring value to both sides. NetApp's a very engineering oriented company. I know them very well, living in Silicon Valley, so I give them props for that. Question for you is when, when you hear someone say data-driven storage or data-driven analytics, what does that mean to you as a partner of a storage uh, supplier? For us, it's, uh, it's another way to look at, uh, at the way we're going to provide service to our customers in the, in the years to come. Um, we, I think that customers are going to expect more and more services, more and more value uh, from the service that we're going to provide them, whether it's going to be storage, compute, or network, or even security. And, um, and I think that's always a good thing for us to have uh, more tools to build new technology for tomorrow. Great. And NetApp's uh, channels and partners, What's it? What's the message from NetApp these days with the to the partners? You're enabling them. Obviously, you make help them make money. Obviously, uh, but I think the the biggest uh, uh, challenge is that we drive the ecosystem in the right direction. If we just stick to the traditional players, we will not be successful. So we have to expand the ecosystem, uh, going up to different players that are currently probably not on our radar, going up to. Uh, ISVs that help us to uh, really uh, embrace the, the data from a value perspective. So our biggest, uh, let's say, message to the channel is, don't stay where you currently are, develop yeah. the channel with ourselves. And certainly the relationship with Cisco is blooming for NetApp. It, it, it is, it, it's probably since six years, we have now around 8,700 joint customers. Yeah. We go up the stack, we talk about uh, strategic engagements on a, yeah. on a um, on a IT uh, SP perspective, so it's uh, going in the right direction. It's pretty as, important. As your competitors get distracted and do things or doing things, uh, you guys uh, eating their lunch. Is that uh, 
<laughs> you smiling? E eating their lunch is uh, probably not the right way. Croissant, way, but breakfast, or is it dinner? Is it what's going on? Who, you, who, are you who, eating the breakfast, lunch, or dinner of the competitors? Uh, currently, I would <laughs> say in French, I think we are uh, jointly engaging on a on a croissant perspective. <laughs> so we're heading in the right way. So these yeah. partnerships are very important. It's always yeah. a great uh, fun time. It's been fun watching the storage and. I've uh, been watching NetApp for many years. Remember when they went public back in the, the dot-com A days? They still keep their roots. Uh, yeah. Great to see you having great success. Uh, congratulations on a great partnerships. The Cube live coverage here with NetApp and their partner inside the Cube here at Barcelona at Cisco Live 2018 in Europe. I'm John Furrier. We'll be back with more live coverage after this short break. <laughs>